Who will be the coach of the Sparks? Who will decide this? Who are the candidates? And who should be named the coach? It's obvious, really. It's really a no-brainer. But you'll need to stay to the end of the video to find out. But first, if you like the WNBA and women's basketball content, then subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get into it. After a disastrous 2022 WNBA season, the LA Sparks are looking for a new coach. Fred Williams won't return to the Sparks as he's going to Auburn to be the associate head coach for the women's basketball program. War Eagle. The Sparks have not had a GM since Penny Toller was fired in October 2019. Well, Derek Fisher, but really, come on. So who is running things? I say it's none other than the Magic Man. I'm the Magic Man now. Ever Cadabra Holmes? No, not that one. Irvin Magic Johnson. As you're probably aware, Magic Johnson is part of the ownership group that owns the Dodgers, and in 2014, they stepped in to buy the Sparks franchise when the previous owner, Paula Madison, abruptly announced that they would no longer operate the team as their family had lost $12 million operating the franchise since buying it from the Buss family in 2007 for $1.4 million. Now, Magic Johnson loves nothing better than being loved. And being the savior of women's basketball in Tinseltown, that was perfect. At the start of his tenure, he was very public with his involvement with the Sparks. In August 2014, an article by ESPN's Ramona Shelburne outlines how Magic was being sent Sparks game film while in Europe on vacation on his yacht, and how he knew a coaching change had to be made, and he called the management group together and told them it was time for a coaching change. He then put GM Penny Toller in as interim coach for the remainder of the season. After the season, Toller returned to her GM role. Brian Angler was hired as coach, and success for the Sparks started to happen as they went to back-to-back -back finals, winning the championship in 2016. Look at the happy family in 2016 with Magic, Toller, Angler, and Candace Parker accepting the championship trophy. Then Magic took over as Lakers president of operations in February of 2017, and he became less publicly involved with the Sparks. However, stormy weathers were coming to the Sparks as Brian Angler suddenly resigned and Fisher was appointed as coach by Toller in a search of one. <laughs> Now here's the thing, it was pretty clear that Fisher was a disaster as a coach and as a GM, and Magic Johnson did and said nothing. Why was that? Was he protecting a former Laker? Or was he just gun-shy after his Laker experience as he learned the dangers of being the public face of team moves after his stint as Lakers president, which ended in 2008? Who knows, but really the Sparks' future was doomed when Fisher benched Candace Parker. How Magic allowed Fisher to do this without stepping in is unclear. So even with all that said, it's Magic who I think will be making the call on the coach, but from the shadows. Here's a list of five options that he and the Sparks will look at in terms of candidates. I think there's one clear choice, but without further do let's run down the five options note some of these are directions that the sparks should go in and how they would sell it to their fan base number five the ex nba star option now sparks fans pray your team does not go down this road or your coach might be kurt rambis okay maybe not rambis but maybe him or something in that vein maybe a michael cooper or bill lambeer we'll be told how passionate they are about basketball again my guess would be rambis as we'd be told about his coaching experience learning under the zen master phil jackson and how passionate he is about basketball during the preseason, there will be a story on Phil Jackson's influence on Rambis and how he's given the book Pygmalion to Kennedy Carter to read, which will turn her game and life around. In addition, they'll tell the fan base that he can be the GM as well due to his great experience working in the Lakers' front office and what a great understanding he has of team building with all the Lakers' success during the Jenny Buss era. Now, the question I'm not sure of is where he and Magic stand. Does Magic feel Rambus was on Team Rob Palinka, who he feels put a knife in his back? Anyway, this hire is unlikely, and if it does happen, Sparks fans be afraid. Be very afraid. I'm afraid! Don't be afraid! No. Be afraid. Regardless of how they sell it to you. Number four, the ex-WNBA star player option. As we know, ex-star players make the best coaches. Sue Bird, come on down! Come to L.A. As you're probably aware, Bird is retiring, and what would be better than the Sparks to bring in the star player with their superstar wife, Megan Rapino? Is there anything more L.A. than this? 
I can see the story. She was a smart point guard. This is the female version of Kerr, her Nash. Oh, the gushing on the ESPN ABC broadcast would be incredible. Can you see her joking with Tarasi on the sideline as a coach? They would love it. There would also be stories about how she was sad to leave Seattle, but she's taking the Sparks position for the betterment of the WNBA as the WNBA is better when the Sparks are going strong and she felt it her duty to do this. Now the other ex-player star option is Candace Parker. Yes, I know this is a long shot, as she will likely keep playing as she has another year left on her contract. But hey, I can dream anyway. But could you see it? Parker, the prodigal daughter, returns to L.A. The classic L.A. story comes full circle. Ran out of town by Fisher, and now she's back as coach to fix the Sparks. Again, spare me your comments as I know that she's under contract until 2023. But it's a dream again, and I just want to see Fisher get the meme treatment if Candace Parker was to return to coach. Number three, the recycled coaching option. This is, well, shall we call it the Bill Fitch, Kevin Lockery option? For those a bit younger, think Mike Brown. Now, I doubt the Sparks will go down this road, as if they wanted to go down this route, they would have kept Fred Williams. But, in truth, it was hard to keep Williams after he sat out the Sparks Player of the Future and Kennedy Carter. If they are going to go down the retread, I mean, sorry, I mean the experienced coach route, then Pokey Chapman would be a good fit. She's currently in the car wash up in Seattle. She had some issues at her previous coaching stops. Notably, she resigned from LSU in 2007 due to allegations of being in an inappropriate relationship with a player. As well, she ultimately was fired from the Sky and Fever. However, if you want to sell it to the fan base, you would say the former Sky and Indiana Fever coach has a ton of experience both in the WNBA and overseas. Okay, now let's get serious. The last two options are the most likely and most realistic. We'll call these the Becky Hammond and James Wade options. Number two, the Becky Hammond option. This takes into account that the WNBA, like all leagues, are copycats. And with Becky Hammond having success with the Aces, getting a high female coach from the NBA would get the fan base excited and is easy to sell. The two coaches that fit this mold would be Teresa Weatherspoon and Lindsay Harding. Weatherspoon is an assistant coach for the New Orleans Pelicans. She also ticks the box as a star player as she had a Hall of Fame career playing in the WNBA as a point guard. As we know, teams love to hire point guards. Weatherspoon has head coaching experience as she coached for her alma mater, Louisiana Tech, from 2009 to 2014, where she had an unspectacular record of going 99 and 71. However, this would likely be overlooked due to the gloss of her being associated with an NBA team. Lindsay Harding would be another option that fits this mold, and she's close by as she's in her third season as an assistant coach with the NBA Sacramento Kings. She previously worked for the Philadelphia 76ers as a scout and then was promoted to an assistant coaching position before she moved on to Sacramento and is currently the Kings player development coach. Okay, now we're down to the number one option, which I think is a no-brainer. The number one coaching candidate for the Los Angeles Sparks is Latricia Trammell. Yes, the LA Sparks should go in-house as your coach is already sitting on your bench. Why Trammell, you ask? Well, first, let's be honest. All coaching hires are gambles. And she seems to be a pretty good gamble. She has a reputation of being a defensive wizard. Well, everybody's a defensive wizard. But anyway, and as well with the Sparks team next year, you'll have Agumake and Sykes. A defensive-minded coach is a good idea. Trammell has a lot of experience as she previously was a WNBA assistant in San Antonio, and before that, she was a longtime head coach and assistant at the college and high school levels. She won two NAIA national championships at Oklahoma City in 2014 and 2015. This hire would be more in the mold of James Wade, who was not hired with a lot of fanfare but had a long, solid resume and was given a chance. The other advantage with Trammell is is that she's been able to see the roster day to day and would have a good idea of where she thinks the roster's at. This might help with the Sparks answering the Kennedy Carter question sooner in regards do you double down on Kennedy and bring her back or do you trade her for cents on the dollar? Well, so there you have it. Those are the five options in my opinion. What do you think Magic Johnson will do? Who do you think they should hire? Or did I leave somebody out that you think they should hire? Let me know in the comment section below. By the way, check out this video on Kennedy Carter, which might give you some insight in regards to if the Sparks should keep her or trade her. Thanks for watching.